QuickBooks Online 2022 Budgeted Income Statement Export to Excel and Modify Part Number 2. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We set up with a 30-day free trial, holding down control, scrolling up a bit to get to the 125%. We're currently in the home page, otherwise known as the Get Things Done page, in the business view as compared to the accounting view. If you want to change to the accounting view, it's something you can do by going to the cog up top. Switch to the accounting view down below. We will be toggling back and forth between the two views, either here or by jumping to the sample company file currently in the accounting view. Back to the Get Great Guitars, opening a few tabs to put reports in. We're just going to open two tabs this time, right-clicking on the tab up top to do so, duplicating it back to the tab to the left, right-clicking again and duplicating again. As that is thinking, let's see where the reports are located over here in the accounting view, which is on the reports on the left-hand side. Jumping back on over to the business view for Get Great Guitars, we're in the second tab. We're going to go into the business overview. We're just going to open up two reports this time in the reports area, income statement and the trial balance. Closing up the hamburger. Let it think a little bit. Let it think. Don't rush it. And then we're going to go into the profit and loss or the income statement. Profit and loss or income statement. Range change up top. 010122 to 022822. And run it. We'll go to the tab to the right. And then back down to the business overview. We're going into the reports. Closing up the hamburger. This time searching for the trusty trial balance. The good old T to the B. Going into it. And we'll do the range change up top from 010122 to 022822 and run it. In the prior presentation, we discussed that we're going to be doing a budget for the income statement or based on the income statement, income statement type budget. The budget you'll recall being found in the first tab. If we go to the cog up top, that's where the budget is. But we need the information to implement the budget. And we have, if we have any kind of a complexity with the budget, if we're not just going to copy the prior period exactly, then we might want to export it to Excel, which is what we have done here. Think about the adjustments and then put them back into the system using this area so that we can then run reports in Excel, including a budget versus actual report as time passes. So what we did is we exported the income statement, but not this income statement because it has all these subtotals. We want just a straight plain income statement with all the subtotals that are involved in the actual report. Therefore, we exported the trial balance and formatted it to, in essence, a single step income statement, even more simplified than that. In essence, you know, positive numbers, income, negative numbers, expenses. And then we got the bottom line number that ties out to net income for our two month time period here. One, three, two, four, oh, five. It looks like this. So there's our income statement, 1324. We don't have the 05 because we got rid of the pennies because it's just a budget. So if we, we're going to now assume, if I go back to the income statement, this is actually what happened. This is our actual data for January and February. That's what actually happened in our practice problem. We're going to kind of assume that this data that we put into Excel is the data from the prior period, which would be November and December, so that we can then base a 12-month budget on it and then put that 12 month budget into the system and run actual versus uh, the budget reports for the two months period that have passed in our practice problem, January and February, and then just budgeted numbers out past that point. So let's go back on over to the income statement. This is where we have, I'm just gonna, now this is gonna be some Excel stuff here. I know it's not an Excel course. I'm gonna do it fairly quickly, but just to give you an idea of what we're, of what we're gonna do here for the budget, I want to take this, I know this is two months of data, I'm going to imagine it's prior two months of data for November and December, and then use it to budget out into the future for the next 12 months. So to do that, I'm going to put some headers up top. I'm going to put my cursor on column one, I need to get up above that, so I'm going to right click on it and insert so I can put some headers and I just want to put my dates up top for the headers. I'm going to close this one up a little bit, I don't need this long of a title. And notice I have some accounts down here that they're showing that they're parent accounts. So this one is actually general business expense and is the category. And then it's got the subcategory of bank fees and services. I don't really need that first category. So some of these, I might make them smaller by just saying, I really only need the actual account, which is the sub account. These two like payroll expenses. It doesn't really bother me because it's not too long there. 
but that first one was super long and so I'm gonna get rid of it get it out of here get it out I'm gonna scroll up a little bit okay so now we're gonna say this is gonna be Jan and Feb Jan and Feb I'm gonna put my cursor on those two selecting them grab that auto fill handle drag that all the way to the right till we get to December because we're doing a 12 month thing here November December there it is before I before I click anywhere else I'm gonna go to the home tab alignment while those are selected and center them I'm also gonna make them black and white which is what I often do for the header areas to distinguish them from the non header areas by going to the home tab font group paint brush thing or paint bucket thing and there's that and then the letters need to be white if they're gonna stand out otherwise you can't see them because they were black on black you need you need the contrast to make things work so now we're gonna then say that we got to divide the two now these this is two months so the most basic thing I can do the most basic budget is to take basically the last year's budget if it was 12 month divide it by 12 and say that's what you expect to happen on a monthly basis going forward or you could get a little bit more specific you could say what exactly happened on a month by month basis for the last 12 months I expect to happen for the next 12 months I'm gonna start with that first kind of baseline except I only have two months of data so I'm gonna start just populating our budget and say I'm just gonna say whatever is over here I'm gonna divide it by two because this is two months and these are all one month and then that'll be my baseline for my 12 month projection going out into the future it'll look something like this this equals the prior tab divided by two so there it is the next one would be equal to the prior tab divided by two the next one of course would be equal to the prior tab divided by two and so on and so forth so now the question is well how can I do that as easily as possible so there's a couple different methods you could do so for example you could go to the second tab all the all the way over here and it's always going to be equal to the one prior to it and that way you could copy it across this way and I can even copy it down this way that's one method pretty easy to do the other method is you could say well I can use an absolute method I'm gonna delete that and say I'm gonna double click on this and make that absolute by saying uh, the F4 on the keyboard or dollar sign before the B and the 2 and that will allow me to copy it across this way so I could do that to each one of the cells because absolute reference means don't uh, don't change this this cell always pick up that 200 and that's what it's gonna do so it's gonna pick up the 200 or I could use the mixed reference I could say well how can I just do the minimum amount of things I can delete these two below I want to be able to just do the minimum amount here and be able to copy it both down and to the right for that we can use a mixed reference and I could say okay if I move to the right I don't want the B to move that's what the dollar sign is before the B but when I move down over here on the rows I do want it to move so I don't want a dollar sign before the two so I can allow that to move like it normally would and that's going to be the shortest way that we could just copy this all the way through and get what we would expect to get I hope so let's try it out if I copy it to the right you can see if I double click on it it says okay yeah it took that same cell B2 because the B didn't move and I didn't move down so the two is not a problem in this case and then divided by two if I copy it down this way then we're gonna say does that work we're gonna say if I double click on that yeah it took this one divided by two because the B the B column didn't move but the three moved down the two went to three which is what we want and the two divided by two remains the same so I can copy that all the way across then I can say all right let's just copy this down all the way to here not to the net income line this is the total line right down there and all the way across we could double check it and say does that do what we want it sure does do what we wanted it to so let's let's then cop I'm going to select this whole column then and copy it all the way to the right all the way to the right till we get to December which I can't see I went too far that's okay I'll just delete these last couple columns we'll just clean that up clean it up delete and then we'll have a total on the end total the tote I'm gonna copy the formatting over here which is in the home page clipboard format painter let's copy the format bring it on over and then I'm gonna sum up on this side equals the sum the trusty sum function you could double click here or I like using the keyboard whenever possible because it's more geeky as long as it makes me look more geeky that's what I'm looking for 
and then I go to the left, I'm holding down shift and then going to the left with my arrows, not to, not to this 200, but to this uh, 100 through January and then enter. And then we can copy that. We could do that with the, with the arrow too, but I'll do that with the mouse so we can see it. Right click and copy. And then I'm gonna paste that all the way down. Control V. So there's our totals. And then we can sum it up this way. Did I sum it up? We could sum up the net income. So this net income, for example, is all this. We could sum up this net income. And you might want to make this whole column a different color just to show that it's like your source data. We, we possibly should have even put a space between it. But let's make it like this is like my source data numbers a different color. We'll put some brackets around it. Okay, and then we'll sum up over here equals the sum of these, this column, and we'll copy that. And then I'll just copy that all the way across to the right, putting my cursor on it, the fill handle, grabbing the fill handle, left clicking on it, getting a firm grip and dragging it all the way to the right. So now we've got that, double clicking on it, looks good. I can double check this last number by summing it this way too. I could sum it this way for all the totals to see that it should come out to the same number. There it does, that gives me my double check. Two checks, put two checks by that one if you would because I double checked it. That's what I'm talking about. And then I can put an underline font group and underline. Okay, so there we go. That looks good. And then this, this that's my totals. All right, that's the starting point. Now we might want to say, okay, are there, what am I, based on my other kind of things that could happen, based on the economy, for example, based on, based on what I'm going to do with, for my purposes in, in terms of increasing production, increasing prices, lowering prices, advertising, what kind of changes do I expect to, to be happening? So, so there's a couple kind of ways these changes could take place on a kind of systematic way. You could say, well, maybe, maybe I'm going to have this amount increased by like a percentage amount, for example. You might say, well, I think it's going to increase by some consistent rate as we go forward. That's one way you might think of it. Or you might say, well, I think it's going to go up by a specific dollar amount each time. That's another common way that you'd say, I'm just going to increase it by this dollar amount each time. Or you might say that, uh, well, those, those, are, those are basically going to be the, the common two ways. Now, we might have some items where on the expense side, we think we're going to have them incurred at one month in the middle or something like that. And you could have some differences if you're thinking about a cash basis method versus an accrual basis method on how you might construct the budget uh, and how your bookkeepings are going to be set up from a cash to an accrual basis kind of component as well. You, in, in essence, it would be nice if you can actually do two budgets, a cash basis budget and, a, and an accrual basis budget for the most kind of uh, bases being covered. So let's, let's look at a couple of these kind of methods we might see. I'm gonna keep the first one as it is, and then on the second one, that's when I'm gonna be saying that I'll, I'll keep January the same, and then think that February is gonna increase by 5%. Let's say we think that for the equipment rental, it's gonna increase by 5% all the way through. So how can we calculate that? Well, if January is gonna be the same, we're gonna say, all right, January is 1130, it's gonna increase times 5% plus 0 0.05. That's gonna be 56.5. So then if I add that to the 1130, that's gonna be the 1186. So that would be the 1186. I could get there a little bit faster, but if by saying, well, if I took 100% one plus the 0 0.05, that would be 105% or 1.05 times the 1130 that would give us the 1186 a bit faster, allowing us to put a formula in place here. So in February, this time I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna say this equals the one before it and then multiply it times the 1.05. So February, I expect it to go up to the 1187. So 1187, and then I can just copy that. I can put my cursor on the fill handle and it'll always take the one before it times the 1.05, not to the total, but down to the December. And there we get our 17,986. Uh, so that's one kind of way that we might see that it increase. Let's do the same kind of thing for this one. Uh, we're gonna say in February, it's gonna increase. Let's say it's gonna increase by 10%. So 
So I'm going to do in February, same kind of thing. This is going to equal the prior period times the 1.1. And again, where, where, do, where do I get 10%? How do I think it's going to increase by 10%? I we're going to have to do some projections on the economy. We're just basically trying to think what could possibly happen based on whatever information that we have so we can project out into the future and see if we can determine any kind of trends that are happening that will help us with our calculations. Let's do this one. So that looks good. I'm going to put my cursor on this one on the fill handle and drag it all the way across through December. So there we have it. Now the next one, let's try the next one a little bit different. We might say, well, I think this one's going to increase by a steady $1,000 per month for whatever reason, instead of increasing by a rate. So I'm just going to say, I'm just going to increase it by the same $1,000 each month. So I'm going to double click on this one and say, I think this is going to be the prior sell time plus $1,000 plus $1,000 plus $1,000 and I'll take that one all the way across on the service revenue. That's another way that we might do a pretty, you know, simple calculation that will be uniform across our entire budget. Next, we have the cost of goods sold. Now the cost of goods sold is linked to the, to the income from the products here. So if we say that there's an increase in the income of the products of 10% per period, you would expect the cost of goods sold to follow that unless we're changing our price levels, meaning you, you would expect the, the, the difference or the relationship between sales and the cost of goods sold to be related if you're selling basically inventory, unless again, you're changing the, in, the level of the inventory that you're selling. So in other words, if I'm, if I'm saying that cost of goods sold here was 22,977 divided by the sales price of the 29,226, that would be 78.61% is the cost of the goods that we're selling. I would think that that would be remaining constant going through unless we did some kind of change to the sales price. So, or, so what we're going to do here is we're going to say, let's say that this is going to take the same level increase as we saw with the sale of the income. So I'm going to go in February. This equals the prior sale times the 1.1. And so that's going to increase to the 25. I'm going to copy that across. But before I do, let's double check it. We were at the 0.761. So you would think then that the 25275 divided by the 32148, the increase in the product would still be the 0.7862 or so on. And so it looks like it's doing what we would expect. Let's copy it across. We'll put our cursor on that cell, grab the fill handle, drag it to the right. And there we have the cost of the goods that are sold. Now, a lot of the expense accounts we would expect to be basically the same all the way across, especially if we're using like an accrual type of method because you would expect them to be somewhat similar. So if I go everything below this, bank service charges, $18. It's probably in material for budgeting purposes. In other words, probably not big for, for decision-making purposes. So 18, I'll keep that all the way across. That's fine. The insurance... Now the insurance is one of those types of things where if you're on a cash basis method, you might you might say, hey, I'm gonna pay the insurance periodically. Whereas if you're on an accrual basis method, then you're gonna you're gonna have the uniform insurance across the board. Let's just imagine more of a cash basis method here just to switch things up. So you might say, for example, you've got the 1000 here. Let's just imagine insurance is going to be paid. We're gonna say on February, let's say it was a $6,000 payment in february that we're going to have and we'll have another six thousand in september so if you're on more of a cash basis so that that's going to be the full 12 12 right there so you might do something like that to kind of better better calculate if you're on but so we'll just we'll just do that for that one just to see how you could have ununiform items if you're on a cruel on a cruel basis that you're doing this in likely it being more of a uniform kind of basis so if we look at the rest of them, we got the inter internet expense, we would think would be somewhat constant. We're gonna say that the payroll, the payroll, let's imagine a payroll, the other kind of change you might have is you might say, okay, I think payroll will be constant, but maybe like somewhere in the middle, say like July, I expect to increase payroll. And so you might have a step up in the expenses because you're gonna level up on your payroll at that point in time. So you might say, okay, maybe in July, that's when I think it's gonna level up at that point and jump to, to the next level. So you might say this is going to be the prior point, let's say for right here, 
times that 1.1, so it's gonna increase by the 10% there. And then for the rest of the time period, it's gonna be equal to that same amount and it'll be at that new tier level at that new step. And we'll copy that all the way across here. Now, if that happens to the, to the uh, payroll, then you would think you might have the same kind of relationship just for an estimate for payroll taxes, which get quite complex, the payroll taxes. But in, in theory, you might say, okay, well, if the payroll taxes before, this is my portion of the payroll taxes, Social Security and Medicare were whatever percent, I could say, well, if the payroll taxes here were 486 divided by the 6983, then they're about 0.0695% of the payroll. So you would think then that same amount times the 7682 would be about the increase here. So you would think maybe payroll taxes would be the 534.6 or 535 let's say on the payroll taxes right because you would say the relationship would be the same if i'm here it's 535 divided by the payroll 7682 would be 0 0.0696 versus prior it was 486 divided by the 6983 was the 0 0.0695 and whatever and so on so that's the idea there so then I'll just copy those across. Let's say after that, this is gonna be equal to the prior one. And this is gonna be equal to the prior one, not negative of it. And then we'll put our cursor on the fill handle there and drag it across. So dragging it across, so that's where we stand on the payroll and the taxes back to the left. Supplies would be much the same. We would expect, we're gonna say utilities, we're gonna keep it much the same, the gain. Now the gains was a sale of stock and we're not in the business of selling stock. We're in the business of selling guitars. So maybe we're thinking that's a one-time thing. We don't expect gains to happen and we're not really planning on the gains. That's just some income. That's why it was in other income. So maybe I just delete this all together. So I'm just gonna remove the gains for the sale of stock. And then the depreciation would be according to the depreciation schedule. So we might wanna make, we could go through and make that more specific according to whatever depreciation schedule we're on. If it's a straight line, double declining, we might get that from the tax uh, preparer. That would be an accrual component, by the way, as opposed to a cash component. But we're gonna keep it the same here. And then the interest expense, that would depend on the type, the level of financing that we're gonna have. We might expect it to actually decrease if we think we're not gonna include any more financing, but just simply be paying off the loan because we would be paying off the balance. So let's imagine that one is actually gonna go down so if I go to like February here, we might say, all right, let's say we're gonna take the prior month times 0.95. So it's gonna decrease because we're taking 95% of the prior area instead of increasing where we took like 110% in the past. So I'm gonna say that goes down to the 318. Let's copy that across, put our cursor on that and copy it across. So we have that decreasing. Okay, so let's just use this. This might be something we can use to then impl implement. Notice the bottom line down here, the net income. This was our two month time frame. This is in essence, the one month uh, time frame for January where we didn't really have any changes. We just divided by two. And then we have this loss here for the 6,000. That's why it's useful to kind of look at a cash flow basis too, because that can be an impact. You're gonna need cash flow if you're gonna be having a loss on one of the months possibly. And then we've got our net income here. We're just summing up the total. And then the net income is going up as we have the increases in our revenue. And so we're thinking here, it's gonna end up at that 125,964 summed up this way, which we can double check summing it up that way. So now we've got our month by month breakout that we can put into our, our uh, QuickBooks system. So I'm gonna go, let's make it a little bit nicer. I'm gonna put some brackets around this entire thing. Let's take this whole thing and put some borders around it, why not? And then we're gonna take that, we're gonna go to the homepage font group. I'm gonna put some borders around it. So that looks good. And then our totals are on the right hand side here. If your numbers don't tie out to these totals, then you know that you could change them to these totals if you want, or try to figure out what the difference is. But we're just gonna use this as practice anyway. We're not gonna change any data in the QuickBooks file. 
So you could use whatever you want to do to practice with the budget would be fine. This would just be how I, you might think about putting together a 12 month budget that you can then do the data input, which we'll do next time back into the QuickBooks system.